What's up Machine Freaks and welcome back to another 3D Machines production. I hope everybody's enjoying their Memorial Day. I sure am. And I do want to give thanks to all the men and women that have fought for this country and have given me the freedom to sit here and thank you. I sincerely appreciate it. This day is for you. Today I have plans to work on the GS, but before we do that, let's open up some fan mail. While we're giving thanks, you may as well give thanks to a couple subscribers that went beyond the Call of Duty and sent some fan mail. It's a motorcycle switch, it doesn't have a name or anything. Maybe Xavier? This could potentially come in clutch for the Gator slash GS build. Thank you. Well, my name's Dalton. That's awesome. Let's see what Jake's looks like. Hi Dalton, I thought I would make something for you that was in fact 3D and made on a tiny CNC milling machine. Jody Bergman. Thank you very much, Jody. Last but certainly not least. Hi 3D Machine, save the brat board. I enjoy your videos and great attitude. Best of luck, John Nosby? John K. The K is silent. Save the brat board. I wonder what this could be. Save the I like the brat board. This is awesome. All right, so I'm assuming since I always use the brat board gas tank. For example, I have it on the GS1000 as we speak. Belongs on my brat board here. I'm assuming John sent this so that I can use this instead. Thank you, John, and I'm sure the brat board thanks you too. <laughs> Jake's gonna make the Sonoma a little more froggy fresh. Freaking more dirty in the inside. <laughs> Where do you want it? Because this one's crooked. Do you want me to go off of that one? Oh, I don't care. Or do you want me to put this one straight? Put it straight. That's crooked. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. The 3D Machines one's crooked. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. The Sony one's crooked. Okay, I'll go off the 3D Machines then. You like that? Yeah. Right there? Yeah. I'm going to put it right here. Okay. That's crooked. What do you mean? You want me to take it off? Put it down. Doesn't matter how it looks, dude. It's gonna give you the power no matter what. Huh? Still braptastic. That is definitely crooked. You think that's crooked? Yeah. Well, if you guys want straighter braptastic stickers, I'll have all the info in the description and the comment section. We have a few more. And I wanna hook you guys up before they're all gone. Now that we got Jake's truck putting out more horsepower than ever before. And I do have two braptastic decals on my truck, it's just my windows are painted so you can't see them. Only I can see them from the inside. See, it's right there. Welcome back, beautiful! At this point in the video, I'd like to let you guys know that this video is a little bit more technical than my other videos. So if you don't feel like hurting your brain or, or you don't understand valves and clearances and stuff like that, maybe you want to stop in tomorrow, or if you want to learn something, stay tuned. I just want to give you a heads up. As you're aware, I was having difficulties timing it, so instead of me continuing to fail and, and not really further this whole project, you know, of putting this engine in the Gator, I guess the carburetors decided to leak. I don't know if it's all of them or one or two of them or what, but I have gas all over the floor, which isn't good. I mean, you saw what these carburetors look like. I can't believe they didn't start leaking as soon as I put them back in. So they lasted about 50 hours until they started leaking. But today I'm going to work on the valves. Tell somebody who was in here before because this isn't the original bolt. I don't know if I'm thrilled about that. I'm definitely not thrilled that this thing's covered in JB Weld. <music> Booyah! Now comes the long and tedious process of doing these valves and getting the right clearances. Now when you're finding valve clearances, it's very clutch to stay organized, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to, I have a piece, what? I know how to count, don't I? I'm trying to do too many things at once. I'm trying to make a video and I'm trying to write. Holy smokes. One, two, three, four. So I looked at the manual and it says this is cylinder one and then the far side is cylinder four. I have that marked here. Now I'm going to have the exhaust and the intake. I don't want to get too technical. Just know that you have to have a certain gap to have an engine to work. 
both on the intake side and the exhaust side. The intake is where the carburetors come in, your fuel comes in, your exhaust is where your muffler comes out, your headers come out. Saying that, let's get started. I want to thank David C and Josh T. Josh, thanks for the light. David, thank you for the gloves. They are going to come in clutch on this 3D Machines production. I appreciate it. After a few minutes working on these shims, I got them all removed. And I have all my documentation right here. So these, these are the shims. You can see they're all marked. So this one says 2.15. This one says 2.15. The only one that you can't read is number four exhaust. So that one I'm going to have to measure. But I'm also going to measure the rest of them to make sure that they're still in spec. Because if this says 2.15, and it's actually 2.1 or 2.05, then when I go to order a part, by just doing the math that that shim says, then, that, then I would receive the wrong part. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to put one more letter on each thing, and that is M, and that's going to stand for measure, and I'm going to get that number with this tool. So how I'm going to get a consistent measurement is by using the clutch on this tool here. Can you hear that? That's what that's for. I took the first measurement and it was 85,000. So I had to convert the 85,000s into millimeter and I got 2.15, exactly what this says. That's good, but I'm going to measure all of them to make sure none of them got damaged or somehow wore thinner because this material isn't supposed to wear out, but there are a lot of things that aren't supposed to happen in life. That's why I'm double checking. So I borrowed this tool from my local mechanic. His name's Dave and uh, it worked out slick. It got the job done. As you can see, I have everything written down. I have my shim sizes I need, and I also have the part numbers. So I'm gonna stop and see if he has these, and if he doesn't, well, I'll return his tool. I also am bringing him a bag of chips and uh, two waters, because he's got a worker with him. Now, I've learned that you always wanna give back to the people they give to you. Giving is key. Once you give, then you receive. I have my shims all taken care of. Like all this mess, I have all my parts ordered there. They were extremely expensive. I went up to Dave, he didn't have anything like that. So I ended up having to order them online. I don't even feel like sharing the price right now. It was ridiculous. Maybe once they come in, we'll discuss it more. The most fun part about waiting on parts is there's no fun thing about waiting on parts. Because what happens is you take something apart you got to put it back together before you get the parts in. You can't just swap it out and just put it back together and, and have a nice efficient process. No, that's not how it works. you got to put stuff back on so that dirt, debris, metal shavings in the air don't get into these very delicate spaces in an engine. Alright, I'm done. Woo, that was a lot of work. No, waiting on parts isn't that bad. I guess I do have something slightly more fun than this. Yeah, I think those parts can wait.